All right, let's take a look at this. We'll do a quick video. We'll do a quick video this morning. Market profile. You got to love market profile. Market profile is shows all the participants in the market. This is all the algorithms. This is all the hedge funds. This is all the participants in the market, right? All the professional, non-professional traders, all the participants. What we established is is that we had a big hole in the market below 25, which you still today do. This is low value area. And we got a big hole in the market above 34. So those are breakout levels. So we established those are breakout levels. So what we want to do is once we get into this hole in the market, you can see we have nothing but a lot of space to the downside. You can pick your targets based on the previous day's lows and highs and then also market profile. So what they like to do is they like to go from profile to profile. If you go back and look at all your all of your data on different markets, you'll notice that targets are really neat uh, based upon yesterday's profile. Either it's high value area, the big red thick line, the uh, the control point, um, or the low value area. So we established that we're inside of uh, HVA high value area. We have a triple stack down here, which is low value area, market profile, volume profile, developing profiles, right sandwich on top of it, and price profile. So we know if we get below this area, I've got an 05 target, uh, 06 and a half as my target. Uh, if we start breaking down through, we'll look for slingshots. We'll look for momentum trades. Uh, we just had a failure trade. I uh, gave everybody a heads up on. I'll go over that trade in a second, uh, way before it happened, and we'll, we'll show you how that worked out. Um, then we got the uh, control point up here. If we break 34, the market should gravitate from 34. We should move up to this 53 level because the market likes to go from previous, I mean, current day market profile to the previous day market profile or two days before that. So we see our targets today. If we get through breakthrough of uh, this uh, 25 level, then we're looking for 06. We get through 34, we're looking for 53 and then 66. That's why I use profile in the room to help us gauge breaking levels. So it opens the door to a lot of, uh, you get the, you see all these charts that we send out all the time, these thousands and thousands of charts over the years. It's the, the big moves that we send out are typically outside a profile. You're not inside of a balanced market. What happens is, uh, this has uh, happened since 1985 on price profile, since 1994 on volume profile. If you're inside of HVA and low value area, you are what's called in a balanced market. The market is balanced. So this is a balanced market. Balanced markets are very choppy and they tend to oscillate back and forth between high value and low value because the control point, that blue line is the most volume that's being traded and then the high value and low value is derived from that, that, that level. So that's a balanced market. So when you're in a balanced market, right? The market likes to oscillate. Well, what, what happens is, is that when you're in a balanced market, uh, uh, it oscillates back and forth and the resting stops are typically, you know, just above HVA or below LVA. So when they get outside of that, the market becomes what? This is one of my trades I pointed out this morning before it happened on the failure trade because the market started getting imbalanced. When you get outside a market profile, the market gets imbalanced. Now, imbalanced is where you have, um, where your market now, all these buy stops uh, um, and so on, uh, that all these resting buy orders now have these sell stops below it. So right when these sell stops start hitting, you start getting a move in the market in that hard direction. So you, you, th that's what we try to do. We, we, we try to see that when you get into a balanced market, such as this, a balanced market, and we go into a imbalanced market, which is below market profile. So this is what we played this morning so far. It's the only trade setup we had on the S&P. We played this move down going from a balance to an imbalanced market. And we'll wait and see if the market can get below this low value area to get imbalanced again, which is trying to, and we'll look for the first setup. Let's go over the setup. I gave a heads up to traders, and I'm looking for a slingshot after this switches over, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Look for it. Let's go over a failure trade and, and why I pointed this out. 
So this is the S&P this morning. I, I recognize that market profile at 25, right there at 25. It hit a couple times, once, twice, almost three times. I mean, it, um, once there, I'm sorry, once there, twice there. Typically, it breaks through the third time uh, into an imbalanced market. But what I recognize is this. And I pointed this out to traders on the microphone this morning. I pointed out right here at 929 uh, that we started to get weak on this Rinko, on the 120 Rinko. Why did I mention that? I said, we got a possible failure trade coming up. Why? Because when this large oscillator gets below 40, the market starts getting weak. And if it starts getting weak, that means that we are in a possible failure trade, meaning against zone. We have three trend trades with zone, and we're looking for one coming up when this switches over to slingshot, which I'll point out in a second. But what I recognized is that I noticed that the oscillator was getting below 40. That is weakness. The large oscillator, meaning a thick magenta line. Once it broke 40, I said, look for a failure trade. A failure trade is when this large oscillator gets below 40, and you're, you're looking for a trade against the zones. Because what happened this morning, we were oscillating around in the zones, and so once the oscillator got below, it look, you're looking for a failure trade. So I said, look for the first red bar reversal. If this oscillator can, this smaller oscillator can stay below this 65. So the 65 is our other um, point that is necessary for the failure trade. Now, you can strictly take failure trades based upon this large oscillator breaking. That's fine and doing the reversal against the overall zone. I like him when it's breaking into the lower zone like it was. But it's really neat when they line up, and it lined up like this uh, a few times last week also, is when the small oscillator stays below my bear zone. My bear zone is minimum 65 to 80. So notice how it hit right on it. If you notice yesterday's cells uh, that we had short last week when we're in the trading room, it, it would come right to 65, get rejected, the market would roll over. So that was our short uh, today so far, um, we, had, we don't have news today, GDP is tomorrow, but it's just to show you, your fill should have been 26 and a quarter, 26 and a half or 26, and it got as low as, what, 21 a quarter. So you had a nice uh, a nice uh, four-pointer as far as that run. What you can do is you can, uh, what I've been educating traders that they can, they can look at doing, is that if you're taking trades like that, you can have, um, if you're going for targets, let's say you do multiple contracts, your first target can be, let's say, one point, which is four ticks. Second target is 2.8 ticks. Third target is 12 ticks. And then the rest can be runners, right? Well, if you use a break even plus one, you want to be careful not to put it at too close to the entry. You're going to get stopped out a lot on these Renko bars. So what I like to educate traders, if you're doing a one-point target, two-point target, three-point target, and then runners, is that you can put your break-even at eight ticks or two points. So right when you hit four points, or, or four ticks is one point, and two points, which is eight ticks, then you can, the stock can move down to break-even, then you can go for your 12 ticks, and then you can go for your runners. So that's something that, uh, that, that traders can, can look at doing. Um, on it, on the ATM chart trader, uh, the the strategies that we're merging will do that for you automatically. We're moving where you can trade the failure trade by itself on the strategy. So we're doing that uh, merging those together for you uh, for members that where they'll be able to use four different toggle switches on four of our main setups and um, for, uh, for the overall strategy. So. That's what you want to do in a failure trade, though. You want that large oscillator to get below 40 for sells, above 80 for buys, against overall zone trend, and they're pretty easy to spot, and that's why we gave a heads up before this one developed into a, uh, a nice, uh, what was that, 26 and a quarter potential down to 21 and a quarter, a nice five-point potential for you in a slow market. We're in a slow market this morning. And that was still a nice five-point potential. Now what, now what are we looking for? So if we come back to the charts, you know, I see market profile. The breaking point is breaking my low-value area, right? We're going from a balanced market to an imbalanced market. So 
what we want to do then, uh, this is a slingshot I gave heads up on to earlier. This is a slingshot before it came to fruition. That's working nicely for those that took the slingshot there. But if you're looking for a larger Renko size, we're looking for this to trend change right now. I'm looking for this to turn green to red, green to red over here, these zones. And then we're going to look for a slingshot short because look, look at this big gap in the market. Look at this big gap. Look at this slingshot working well, just working really great. The slingshot in the zone up here that happened, we had the opposite color um, uh, bars up here, these speed bars that told us we're catching the rolling position traders. There's 19 and a half guys for those that wanted the 19 and a half on the slingshot. Uh, there's a slingshot entry here today off the 13. This is the one that I pointed out before it happened. I said, look for a slingshot off the 13. There's your slingshot entry. Got through my bull zone, minimum of 40. Punch right through it. And uh, that's about the same price, around 26 and a quarter. Now we're down to around 18. That's working well. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to look for, there's my zone trend change I want. Now I got my zones lining up, right? So now I got my zones lining up. Look at this. I got my red zone flipped over. My red zone flipped over. My failure was right here. There's our entry this morning. Here's our entry here on the slingshot trade. I mean on the failure trade that I pointed out before she, she, she came to fruition. And then here's a slingshot that we pointed out. So that's working well. Now what? Now what can we look at? Well, I got a market profile that was in a balanced market in between profile. Well, I'm outside of profile now. Now the market's imbalanced. And my next target are these lows of yesterday of 4306 and a half. So how, how can we look to, to, um, to, to look for a setup? The setup we want to look for now is we want to look for a slingshot. We don't have a first wave trade over here because that happened earlier. The first wave happened earlier after a trend change. We, we don't have um, the failure, failure trade just happened earlier. So what other trades do we have? We have the slingshot trade and the momentum trade coming up. So I want to see this market get away from 19 and a half. I don't have anything below me until 06 support. And then I'll look for the first retracement. And then we're going to look for the slingshot on the 13 like it happened here. Here's a great slingshot sell. Here's your sell right there. Your stop, resting stop above in case it's wrong, right? Always want to keep your stops in. Keep your protective stops in in case the slingshot's wrong. Right, we want to keep our protective stops in, and then it's rolling really nice. So whether you took the slingshot off the 13 that I pointed out, um, or, or the failure trade, they both worked well. Now we're looking for a slingshot going into a momentum trade. We want to get away from 19 and a half this order block, get a retracement, hold 19 and a half on the way back up, and let's see if we can target 06 this morning.